What about the, the decision of, of making this movie as a director? Because you were used to a different language, in a way. Reportage, you know, you're, you're a reporter mm -hmm. and you uh, usually talk day by day situations and news. But this story, it's something like uh, a news style, maybe, put in a historical situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was a painter before I was a writer, so I had a visual sense from the beginning. But, you know, the filmmaking choices had more to do with um, a kind of emotional honesty than they did about reportage. Um, you know, reporting and journalism isn't about emotion, it's about information. And this movie is not about information, it's about the opposite. It's about experiencing an event. Um, so that's the connection. You know, the, my journalism background had more to do with researching the movie and making sure that every beat, every scene was something that actually happened. I could prove that happened. Because the movie, I didn't want the film to take on that speculation, that conspiracy uh, conflict, the debate. We've seen that before. We've seen that movie before. I think it's, you're putting in focus characters that usually are out of focus, you know, yeah. in a way. And so how did you uh, decide to uh, choose this kind of style? And, uh, you know, because uh, it's really something like uh, a moment, a situation is, is freezed, yeah. that changes life yeah. of all the persons in, uh, and involved in. You know, a lot of the reporting I did, a lot of the writing I did was about conflict and war zones and violence and death and investigation. And I was always interested in trying to capture that kind of disorientation um, and uh, the kind of fight or flight or the adrenaline nature of surviving that. And so the filmmaking choice was how to best approximate that kind of experience. You know, no one's standing up in this movie and giving speeches. Um, there isn't even dialogue, so to speak. There, I mean, there's some, but it's, it's uh, you know, I talk to the cast over and over, pretend this is happening to you. You know, make it awkward, make it messy. Human experience, human life is awkward and messy, and that's what I try to do. I think it's interesting the way movies is starting to talk about these stories. Uh, I think uh, of Paul Greengrass, uh, for example, his style, you know, the way usually it, it was much more <coughs> kind of, uh, you know, uh, academical. Yeah, the, the presentation. Way of rhetorical, the presentation and the language. And, uh, but nowadays uh, something is going to change, you know. Yeah. That's right. Well, look, I think, that there's, I think that there's room for all of those styles of filmmaking. But I do think that the idea of fictional film seeming more documentary or more journalistic, I like to think of it as more raw, more emotionally honest. You know, it, it feels small and contained. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do with Parkland was to tell a story that seemed contained, but about an enormous thing so that we experience the enormous thing from the very strict point of view of the prism of that individual human experience. Um, I think it's a new visual language. I think it could be. Usually we have uh, all in mind uh, the images from the Pruder film. And, uh, but what's your, your point of origin of all this? What's the, the, the image or the character uh, that uh, put together in your mind that at the first place? Because usually, you know, this, this movie is uh, something very differ different from, from what we are used to, yeah. to see, to remember of this situation. I wanted to think of this film as a car accident. You're driving down the road, it's a nice bright sunny day, your kid's in the back seat, and then suddenly from the right hand side a car comes and blindsides you. And what is, what is it to experience a historical event from the point of view of a cataclysmic accident. So my point of origin was shock, surprise, and panic. 